Right, welcome everyone to this live stream. We are doing the Champions Cup quarterfinal match and it is going to be between La Rochelle and also Sail Sharks. It is 2am here in New Zealand. I am hyped up for this one. Few Kiwis playing in this match as well. So that makes it just that little bit more exciting. But whoever wins this will move on to the semi-final of the Heineken Champions Cup. And I am very excited to see how this one is going to be playing out. But yeah, hopefully... We have got a few people tuning in. We have got James Gordon is up and about. Welcome to the live stream, James. Thank you very much for tuning in. Do appreciate it, mate. And yeah, hopefully we have got a good game on our hands between Sale Sharks and also La Rochelle. I am excited. 2 a.m. I feel like it's not the normal time to be watching a rugby game. But, you know, we got to do what we got to do. And there is another big game happening straight after this one. And that is Exeter Chiefs versus Leinster. And hopefully I will still have the energy to be able to watch that one as well. James has put, am I the only one? I think we have got a couple other people in here as well at the moment, which is very much appreciated. Are you watching the game as well, James, or just listening to the live stream? Do let me know. But nonetheless, we are waiting for kickoff to be happening. Now, I will mention my name calling of these players will be a little bit rough because of the fact that I've just finished not just one, Super Rugby out there on stream, but also a Super Rugby AU. But this match is going to be underway. Sail Sharks are kicking off. And the Rochelle in the yellow. Kerbalo taking that one. I know him. He is tackled by Fafta Clerk. Kerbalo, a Kiwi, and also at first receiver for them. Ehiah West is also from New Zealand. Uh, listening to the live stream, says James Gordon. That one has been kicked into touch by Ehiah West there. And they do clear their lines. Yeah, this is going to be an interesting matchup. I'm not too sure which way it is going to be going because of the fact I think people are saying La Rochelle might have a little bit of an advantage, but then also, I don't know, Sale Sharks, they have some very strong South African players. The likes of Fafta Clerk in that number nine jersey. He's going to be a hard man to get around. There is a little bit of a hold up by the looks of it. They have just got to wipe the rugby ball, but we are a minute into this match, still nil all at the moment. And I am wondering if my screen, um, Sherry Mabob, is actually updating or not. I think I will have to wait and see. There we go. We are good to go now. And we will go like that. Right. The line out throw is to the Sail Sharks. They have gone to the front and they have retained that ball. Now it is Fafta Clerk firing it out to the first receiver. They are trying to use the back line, but it is a little bit of a mess up there. And La Rochelle got a little bit of a knock on. Situation going, so they have got the advantage here now, the Sail Sharks. And it is going to be Fafta Clerk now firing it back. And tell you what, there are some big boys out on that field at the moment. And it is going to be interesting to see which team is going to be the more physical side. Of course, South Africans, we know that they pack a lot of punch on that rugby field. That one has been put high at Oz, taken by Bryce Dillon there for La Rochelle. Had a very good Six Nations for France. And he will be hoping to continue that form into this quarterfinals match. But there were a couple late changes. The number 21 for La Rochelle. They have won the penalty there. But one of the changes is the La Rochelle, number 21, Thomas um, Bourgeon, I believe his name is. He has been replaced by Jules Lebe. Hopefully I have said that right as well. But that was a change that happened just before kickoff. So that is a bit of a shame for them. I would, I would have been watching the stream and editing my vid at the same time, says James Gordon. So that means you will be able to get through a few videos, perhaps. Yeah, at the moment, like I have just come off a hour and a half editing session. Oh, that's big contact there. But a good low tackle. And it is now going to be a line out to La Rochelle. There are some of the players in this match. I am excited to see the likes of Tom Curry in that number seven jersey for the Sale Sharks. Also, their back line's looking pretty diff uh, d decent, is what I'm trying to say. But yeah, I am excited. Have I said I am excited enough times? I feel like I've said it about eight times so far. Hopefully you guys are excited too. They are going for the rolling mall here, La Rochelle. To see what they can do. I am also seeing out there Victor Vito. Of course, an ex-Kiwi Super Rugby player. Gerbalo now is playing scrum half. He has fired it to one of the big forwards. It was Skelton. Will Skelton is out there as well. And that's the thing. I love look, watching these games and learning who is overseas playing for which clubs? There's a little cross kick there from Ehi West. But it's taken well by Tom Curry there. No, it wasn't. It was the number 15. Simon Hammersley is the name. And Fafta Clerk looking like, oh, I'll tell you what, they almost won the ball there. La Rochelle, but it is going to be a penalty there to the Sale Sharks for the player leaving his feet. 
behind the ball first is the call. So now it is going to be kicked into touch by Sale Sharks. Yeah, it's an early morning start, that is for sure. 2.05 a.m. Doesn't get much earlier than that. And the thing is, we might be considering doing a live stream for the match between the Exeter Chiefs and also the um, Leinster side. So that could be a very good match. That will be happening at 4.30. So we're still a wee way away from that. I'm going to try and get my brother's phone. Says James Gordon as well. So that he can do the editing and the watching at the same time. It's going to be the number two for Sale Sharks. In this case, it is going to be, for this one, it is um, Eka van der Merf, who is going to be throwing that one. That one is a line-out drive now. Sale Sharks are going to be using their back line to clerk, going to the man in the, I think he was one of the centres there. The cat is sitting next to me as well for this one. He's going to be hopping up and... We are going to be watching a bit of rugby. Hey, Billy, how's it going? We didn't know where you went, but now it is a good run there. And Tom Curry, only five metres out now. It is going to be to Clerk with the ball in hand. They are going to the short side now. Are they going to be able to get the early try in this match, Sale Sharks? De Clerk has got it in hand once again. It's gone to the number four, which is um, Wies, I believe his name is. Now it's De Clerk going to the number six. They have got the offside now. That are a shell only a couple metres out. De Clerk now with a little offload. On the inside to the number 14 there. And it was McGigan, I think it is. But unfortunately, just not quite able to find the hands there. Hey, Billy, says James Gordon. He is in a weird mood. He kind of just roams the house now. Not sure what he is up to or whether or not he is going to be going to sleep at any stage. Hmm? <laughs> but yeah. Sale so Sharks looking strong at the start of this match. Almost able to find the offload was the clerk there. I think the cat is getting annoyed with the headset or the headphones cord again. Fafta Clerk with a little inside ball there, but not quite able to find the hands of the number 14. And by the looks of it, they are going to be taking the three points early on in this match. Sale so, so Sharks, the cat is moving all over the place. It is going to be McGinty who has got the kicking responsibilities for this one. So I will ask the question, James, what are you doing up at this hour of the morning? <laughs> Do you often stay up till the 2 a.m. mark or is this a um, like just a rugby watching kind of thing? But six minutes into this match, it looks like he is going to be trying to put this one straight down the middle, McGinty, and that will give his side a 3-0 lead after only six and a half minutes. And that is a good way to be. You want points on the board in a quarterfinal because we have seen in the... Um, round of 16, he has got that one. No, he hasn't. It's missed there. Gone away to the left. So not quite able to get that one right there. But yeah, it's one of those ones you want the points on the board because of the fact that if you can get early points, it just puts that little bit of scoreboard pressure on and then anything can happen. But it is going to be a 22 dropout now for La Rochelle editing vids and watching vids or live streams, says James Gordon as well. So I am thankful that you have chosen this one to watch, mate. Is it very much appreciated? Do you do you think you'll be up for the Exeter Chiefs versus the um, Leinster game? Do let me know there. That's a big hit on the La Rochelle player, Victor Vito. Now it is going to be Kerbalo firing it back to Skelton, who is having a good run there. They are just outside of their 22. It is going to be Kerbalo doing a little chip in behind, and it has gone out on the full. So they are going to be going back now, and Sale Sharks have got the pressure back on. Yeah, it's one of those ones. This match, I feel like it could go either way. Like Sale Sharks, they have got some very big boys, but then they also, oh, La Rochelle, they have got some very skilled individual. My voice is almost gone already, which is not what we want, that is for sure. Hopefully, it will be able to last throughout this whole live stream. But yeah, I've already done the two today, and then we have also had the, that is going to be a mole now, and it has, being the Sale Sharks, they have won the penalty once again. And this time, I feel like McGinty will be able to put this one over if he does try it. I'm just going to open up another tab as well while I'm at it, that I can see the scoreboard as well. Yeah, they are going to be going for the shot once again. Are they going to be able to get the three points this time? That's a big question. And James Gordon has said, yeah, 
as well. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting match. I am hoping that I will be still awake enough to be able to do the next live stream and also be awake enough to be able to do the Super Rugby Aterao game tomorrow because I feel like that's the main one that our audience are looking forward to. So I am just hoping that I will be able to um, make that happen. The cat at the moment is very confused, that is for sure, at why I am talking at this hour of the night. AJ McGinty, unfortunately, zero from one at the moment, but 24 metres out, he will be wanting to tap this one over to give Sail Sharks the early lead in this one. Here's lining it up, McGinty. But yeah, I can already hear that my voice is almost going. So I might have to take it a little bit easier on these live streams, these next two, if I do want to have any voice for the one tomorrow. McGinty taking his time, lining this one up. Nine and a half minutes gone in this match already. It has been flying by. And he is now going to try and get his side the lead in this match. He has lined it up. He has got that one, McGinty. And now the score is 3-0 to Sail Sharks. He is a happy chappy about it as well. But yeah, it is going to be a very exciting one, that is for sure. Hopefully my scoreboard is going to keep on updating as well while I am at it. But yeah, um, I got my Nana's phone, says James Gordon. You have a lot of phones at your disposal, James. I am impressed with that. But now it is going to be Ehi West. He is going to be kicking this one off for the La Rochelle side. And I have to say, I do enjoy their bright yellow kit. I feel like I am a sucker for a good yellow kit, and that is exactly what La Rochelle have. It's taken well now. And he is a solid boy in the number 12 jersey for the Sail Sharks. That was um, Rohan um, Jense van Rensburg. And I will apologize in advance for some of these South African name pronunciations. He was looking strong with ball in hand, but unfortunately for him, they have ended up. The penalty has gone because the man in the number three jersey, it was um, Uni Antonio, or yeah, I believe it is Antonio, was able to win the penalty for his side, and they will now be taking on the three points. He's getting a few pats on the back, back from his side as well. It is going to be E. Higher West who is going to be lining up this one from only about 15 metres out, so shouldn't be any troubles for him at all here, and this will then make the match three all. But yeah, the late stage is whoever's going to be able to score the first try I feel like has got a very good chance of winning this match. It's just that scoreboard pressure and the penalties. It looks like we are going to have a few in this matchup. So whoever can keep on tapping over their chances. EI West, of course, is a Kiwi. A fellow Kiwis, La Rochelle, have a few of them. The likes of Victor Vito. And also we have got the likes of um, Tawera Kerbalo in the number nine jersey. Almost done, said James Gordon as well. And that now makes the score three all in this quarterfinal match. Whoever wins this is going to be moving on to the semi-final of the Champions Cup, and they could be versing anyone from the likes of Exeter Chiefs, Leinster, also Bordeaux is in there, Racing 97, or sorry, <laughs> Racing 92. I believe it is Victor Vito taking that one nicely in the air, but he is driven down by Tom Curry. Now it is going to be Kerbalo, who is going to be kicking this one downfield. He has kicked it high, almost charged down there by the Sail Shark player. Now it is going to be the number 15, which for this one is Hammersley. Now it is going to be their number six. And tell you what, some of these South African names I do struggle with. That one was um, Duprez, I believe that one was. But it is offside and a little bit of push and shove as well. Early on in this ma match, Aldrit looking like his opposite number, Duprez. They aren't too happy with each other. And only 12 minutes into this match, I feel like tempers will be high in this one because of the fact that this match is important. Whoever wins this goes through, and both of these sides will want it to be them. But do let me know your score predictions in the chat as well. Who do you think is going to be able to get the win in this one? It was an offside against the Sail Sharks, so that is why La Rochelle have the penalty. Bryce Dillon is going to be kicking this one into touch. It is a very good kick from him as well, getting them a lot of metres. And now they will have a good attacking opportunity off this line out as well. Uh, still awake, said Mike Jones Sr. Yes, indeed. It is currently 2.15am. Thought I would do this watch along and also maybe the Exeter Chiefs versus Leinster. Um, I need some sleep. As well as Mike Jones Sr. Do you have work um, today, Mike? Or is it tomorrow? No, sorry. You had, I remember for the live stream yesterday, you had to go to sleep, if I'm not wrong. 
So what days do you work? Do let me know. Aldrit did claim that one in the rolling, or now they're trying to get a rolling mall going, but this one has been shut down, but now they have got this one going a little bit here. Ray Rochelle, they are just outside of the 22. It is going to be Kerbalo going to Alderit once again. And I have to say, I am glad he wears bright headgear because it makes it very easy to be able to work out who he is. Oh, that's a big shunt off for Will Skelton. They are still outside of the 22. Kerbalo goes around the side. Yep, I got work today, lol, says Mike Jones Sr. What time do you start, Mike? Oh, yes, it was that one, wasn't it? Because you did mention about how, tell you what, it feels like ages ago. And I feel like I'm losing track of my days at the moment. That's a nice little kick in my mind. And it is going to be in the hands of Marlon Yard there. And we have also got, but had a two-hour sleep, then just woke up 11 a.m. See, my Jones Sr., yeah, that is an early start, mate. So maybe, I feel like maybe it could be time to get some sleep in that regard. But if you do want to stick around, it is much appreciated. It will probably be a quieter live stream purely because I feel like a majority of our audience are actually from the Southern Hemisphere. So not too many are lurking in that Northern Hemisphere, which is when this game is being played in the afternoon. And it looks like by the looks of it, Will Skelton there with a good run. He's looking strong in that number five jersey, that is for sure. But now they are looking to see Skelton. They are checking the TMO by the looks of it because of the direct contact to the head, I think, in the... A little bit of a headbutt there accidentally, I think. I'm not sure whether that was intentional. I don't think it was. We have got 15 minutes gone in this match, and it is 3-all at the moment. It's so laggy on this phone, says James Gordon. I'll join back, hopefully, if I don't fall asleep, says Mike Jones Sr. And I mean, you could have it just on your bedside table or something. I'll try and do the commentary for you. You could have it on, like, quieter so that you can also sleep. And then if you do end up waking up, then you could just, um, yeah, hear a little bit of it. Well, you do it if you did want to do it that way. And now it is going to be Kerbalo. It's a penalty to La Rochelle once again for the high tackle. And now they have got another chance to work their way up the field. Time off. They're already looking like there are a few men running in for the drinks. Are they going to have a little chat to the sales shark side? Yes, they are. High penalty count by both sides is the call. So they are saying just to be careful and that it needs to improve. Going to be a interesting matchup. We have seen already that some of these players look like they have got a lot of passion in this match. We have got sounds like a good idea from Mike. I do appreciate that a lot, mate. But yeah, it is going to be one of those live streams. I'm hoping my voice will last. And if it does, then I'm hoping it will be able to last for the next one. But a lot of early penalties in this match. I am just waiting to see who is going to be able to get this first try. That is another good kick from Bryce Dulan there. He has been looking pretty decent. But yeah, it's another high tackle there on the number 14. It is um, Dylan Lates, the South African, I believe he is, if I'm not wrong. But it could be. I feel like my knowledge of some of these players isn't as good as it should be. I'll be on silent for about 10 to 20 minutes. I'll leave my game on, but I'm just going to go for a drive to the gas station, says Mike Jones Sr. Alrighty, we will see you a little bit later on, Mike. Number two now with the throw. That one's going over the top. It is in the hands of Kerbalo now. Was passed to him by the number three, which is Antonio in this one. Or Antonio, sorry. And now that was a good run, but that has been stolen in the breakdown by the Sale Sharks, taken off Aldrit off his back. Now it is going to be the number eight, Duprez, who is trying to work it out, Dan Duprez. And now it is going to be Fafta Clerk trying to find the gap. I think I read out the wrong name. No, I think I might have gotten it right there. But Fafta Clerk having a good run there for his side. What are they going to do from here, Sail Sharks? They are trying to build their way up the right hand or the left hand side of the field as we look at it. Fafta Clerk rolling the ball back inside of the 22. At the moment, are the Sail Sharks? He will be doing the box kick here. Fafta Clerk, he has fired it high. It's going to be a bit of a challenge for the man in the number 14 jersey, but he takes it beautifully and he is tackled by a yard in the end. Now it is going to be Kerbalo goes to Aldrit, who does hit the ball up as well. It is a good carry from him. Now it is going to be Kerbalo. Little chip late shot on Doolin. And that looked ugly. That looked like it was well and truly looking like it was going to be a penalty. But the referee has said it was all right. Now it is the number 14. Lades, who is going to be firing it back to Doolin, who is going to be kicking this one 
down the middle of the field. It is a big kick. Is it going to go too far? Yes, it is. Too much on that one for Bryce Doolin. And we are going back now for it. Possibly a scrum, I would think. Um, I had to go back on the not laggy phone, said James Gordon as well. And they are saying Livey was committed, so that is why they have decided that it isn't going to be a penalty. Oh, I don't know. I think you got to look at it again because it looked like there were arms in the tackle. It's the call. So they are happy enough with that one. And now it is going to be a scrum. It's going to also be the Sale Sharks feed. Who is going to be able to get the first try of this match? I'm excited. The time is off at the moment, 18 and a half minutes in. And I am just well and truly waiting to see who is going to be able to strike first. And then whoever strikes first, I feel like, will strike often for the rest of the match. We are looking at Dylan here. Oh, see, that's a shoulder to the head there. And I feel like they are saying he was committed, but he, he wrapped the arms, but it's still high. And I feel like that's direct contact to the chin of Doolin there. So I am kind of surprised that it wasn't possibly a penalty, but it is going to be a Sail Sharks scrum now. They have got a lot of talent in that fullback. The likes of Duprez, Duprez as well, Tom Curry. They have got Beaumont, Beaumont sorry. They have got um, Wilgriff John and also Bevan Rod as their props for this one. We are going to have a close view of the scrum here. It looks like it could be a very closely contested one. They are, what are they doing now? They are, they were showing a ball icons. Okay, they were doing a ball shape. So they are getting a new ball at the moment. They are ready to go here. The two big four packs. I'm not sure of the pack weights, but both looking like pretty solid scrums. Will Skelton's a huge individual in that lock jersey. In the number five. But then on the other side, you have got Josh Beaumont, who is the captain. Fafta Clerk, the mastermind at the back of the Sail Shark Scrum. And he will be wanting to take his team to the semi-final. A lot of experience between both of these sides when it comes to World Cups and all sorts. The champion has said, yo, brother, up late. We are indeed. We are watching a bit of Northern Hemisphere rugby. Sail Sharks. And it is a penalty to La Rochelle in that one. That was a, a very big scrum from the men in the yellow um but yeah it is a very late but i decided to watch the champions cup quarterfinals games see how they go and see the difference between them and the southern hemisphere stuff but yeah it's good to see you mate and hopefully you will stick around for some more of this one are you going to be watching this game the champion or are you going to be um what are your plans are you going to be watching exeter chiefs versus leinster as well that is a big game that is happening the finals come early is what some people are saying about that one uh, what you reckon, says um, the champion as well. My gramps took the laptop to work and it might get, be getting fixed, says James Gordon as well. And what you reckon, is that for the um, watching the rugby? I assume that is. Who are you going for in this one? I feel like I don't know these sides as well as I should because of the fact that, I mean, I know a few Kiwis for La Rochelle. Name's Maxi. I will call you Maxi from now on as well. I feel like, have you mentioned that before? I probably unfortunately um, forgot it. Um, but I will remember Maxi now. And that one has gone to the front to Victor Vito, the Kiwi, of course. And now it is Aldrit. Gregory Aldrit has got that ball in hand. Now it is going to be Kubala around the side. A little bit of a risk there. Trying to take that one on. He has gone to ground now, though. They have got the advantage as well now for La Rochelle. So they will be hoping that they will be able to get possibly three points, if not seven. Now it is going to be the number 13. Demeru now throwing the ball, and they are going to be going back. Um, Norm Maxwell as well for the name Maxi for short. Nice one. Right. I will try my best to remember that one. But yeah, it is going to be an exciting matchup between these two sides. It has been a slow start. Only six points in the first 20 minutes, two penalties. And by the looks of it now, they are going to be taking another three. Or are they? Yes, they are. They are going to be going for the three here by the looks of it. And it is going to be a shot for La Rochelle. I feel like it's going to be slightly ironic if this game doesn't have any tries, purely because of the fact that I feel like all of these um, Champions Cup games have been very high scoring. And I feel like it's going to be the one game that I watch that it will end up not having as many points. But I'm, I'm, hopefully, I'm hopeful that this one, soon as we get one try, it's going to start pouring tries and we will get to see plenty of action for La Rochelle. 
Ehi West has been able to convert one from one so far. 21 metres out for this one. He will be hoping to get it over as well. But this would put them three points in the lead. And tell you what, this game, a lot is on the line. I'm not actually sure of the brackets in terms of who would be playing who in the semi-final. Um, I might actually have to look that up in a short moment. That one has gone over, though, from Ehi West. And the score now is going to be 6 to La Rochelle and 3 to Sail Sharks. But I will ask you, Maxi, have you been following the Champions Cup up to this date? Um, do let me know. And also, who is your pick to be able to win it? Because there are a lot of talented teams in this. The likes of Exeter Chiefs, Leinster, these two sides are pretty decent as well. You've got Bordeaux, Racing 92. You've got all of those sides in there, and all of them have got a decent chance. I've been able to win it to Clerk. It's chasing that one hard, and he has taken it beautifully. Fifth to Clerk there. Was able to get it over Dylan. Now it is going to be Tom Curry running hard at the line. They are 22 metres out from the try line here. Now it is going to be the Sale Sharks. Halfback Fifth to Clerk using their back line now. That's in the hands of the number five, which was Bowman, the captain. And it was a turnover, but they have taken that one straight back. Fifth to Clerk with a little grubber in behind. Great kick there. And he is under a lot of pressure, Doolin. Interesting choice there from Doolin. He didn't want the rolling ball by the looks of it. So he decided that he would get carry back into his own end goal. He did have a lot of pressure on him, though, there, um, Doolin. I'm just interested to see whether this was the best option for the man because he did get that ball and he did decide to run backwards and Yard was all over his back there. And because of it, it is going to be a five-meter scrum to the Sale Sharks. I'll be back. Says James Gordon as well. We will see you in a little moment, mate. But I am excited. This match, I'm hoping, is going to be one of those nice ones that lead us straight into the um, yeah, the big match between Exeter Chiefs and Leinster. Um, no, I don't watch Northern Hemisphere rugby, even though I'm living in Europe um, in Spain. So that is pretty awesome. What time is it in Spain, by the way? I assume it isn't um, 2.30 a.m., or is it? Maybe is it, is it afternoon in Spain? I struggle with my time zones. I'm a shocker for them. Um, so maybe around that kind of 3.30 um, p.m., <laughs> maybe. It is the number eight off the back now for Sale Sharks. It is Dupres, Dan Dupres, and he has been driven sideways there. Now it is going to be the other Dupres on the field, and he is hoping to be able to drive over. Um, it is 4.30, okay. And, oh, and that one is going to be held up, and it is going to be to La Rochelle that they do get the penalty. So 4.30. So that would mean, if I'm not wrong, the, oh, maths is hard. So the games would be on at 9, 9 o'clock or so for the 7 p.m. kickoffs, um, Maxi, for Super Rugby Aotearoa, I assume. Maybe. Nine, yeah, around nine. Ten hours with daylight savings as well. But yeah, Antonio is going off the field. I believe, and Dupreya there was wrestled to the ground by Skelton. That is going to be a big battle on the field, and it was a rolling mall in the end. Well, I guess it was not really rolling. It was a standing mall, you could say. And then from there, unfortunately, they just weren't quite able to find um, the ball at the back of the ruck, or the back of the mall, sorry. <laughs> My brain, you have to forgive me. It is 2.30 a.m., so some of the words coming out aren't going to be right. Used to stream the games. Uh, I can't find the games now, um, said um, Champions, or sorry, said Maxi as well. Because that's the thing, I, I'm i lucky because for New Zealand we have got Sky, but I struggle to find, other than is Rugby Pass, does Rugby Pass go to Spain? See, I know they do a lot of countries, but I'm not sure if Spain is one of them. But hopefully, um, yeah, hopefully I will be able to keep you informed enough about what is going on. Um, so you're the go-to. Says um, Maxi as well, and I do appreciate that, mate. Because that's the thing, we've had a lot of people who actually, like, they've been in most of the live streams, and it is pretty awesome with the fact that, like, you guys, you know, you always turn up, and um, it just makes these so much more fun. Like, I could be watching a game at 2.30 a.m. by myself, but, like, we're just chatting away, and it does make it a good time. Victor Vito off the back, the big man. He has been tackled by Dupreya in the end. Uh, that one was Jean, Jean Luc. The prayer. Now, all the ball was out, but luckily for La Rochelle, they were able to just keep that one. I have to say, getting a bit peckish at 2.30 in the morning. 
It's something I didn't think I would be saying. But now it is going to be the penalty to the Sale Sharks. And that means player leaving feet, I believe it was. And now we're in the situation. Are they going to take the three points or do they kick for the corner? We're 25 minutes into this match. They are going for the three. And that is going to make this, this game six all. I have a terrible feeling we're going to see a trialless game here. And it will be the first game that I decide to watch. But these two sides looking like they are pretty even so far. So it wouldn't really surprise me too much if that was the case. But yeah, it is exciting. Remember, I said I used to play for the Crusaders, 96 to 05. I remember that on the um, one of the videos. And I didn't. So Maxi, I'll check your name. So it is Norm Maxwell. I might actually write that down if that's all right. Because I would love to see. Um, it's pretty awesome the fact that we have got people like, re like well, I was going to say related, but like kind of connected to the Super Rugby teams and also just in general, like um, just you guys all having the rugby knowledge. Like you guys are some knowledgeable fellas. So I know most of the coaches, says uh, Maxie as well, which is pretty awesome. So you haven't heard the word of whether Scott Robinson um, is going to be going overseas yet, have you, Maxie? Have you been talking to him recently? Because that's a big question on everyone's mind for the British and Irish Lions and also England. Is he going to be going overseas? Um, yeah, I know the coach as well. That one has gone over from Sale Sharks. So we are sitting six all now after 27 minutes. Slightly slow start, you could say. But I feel like it is going to be ramping up very soon. And that is what does make this so exciting. That is for sure. They are just talking about how competitive the loose forwards are in these matches. It is going to be exciting to see who is going to be able to get the better of this one because these two sides look like they're pretty evenly matched. It is going to be the man in the number 12 jersey, which is Rohan um, Jans Van Rensburg is the name. Um, haven't talked to him lately and tough one is what uh, Maxi said as well. Yeah, it's going to be, a, oh, I'll tell you what, that was an awkward one for Victor Vito. It landed on top of the um, kind of um, sponsors board and almost popped up and hit him in the mush there. But yeah, 28 minutes gone, 6 all. <laughs> La Rochelle have got the line out throw here. But yeah, I am excited. I've said I am excited too much. I feel like I can't think of any other words because it is 2.30. That one is going to Victor Vito once again. Seems to be the main man in the line out now. It's a high OS goes to Aldrich, who's running hard. And it's run almost over the top of Tom Curry. Now it's a high OS to has kicked that one high. And it looks like Bruce Dillon, or Bryce Dillon, sorry, has tried to take that one. And it's gone backwards as well. Now it's the number 14. It is Dylan Lades, who did have that one. Kurt Barlow now firing it back to a high OS going for the cross kick here. And it has found the man, Victor Vito, all of the Kiwis. Link it up, Aldridge gets the offload. And that is the first try of the match. And it goes the way of La Rochelle. But a bit of Kiwi magic there. It went Kerbalo to Ehio West, out cross kick to the man who was on the wing at the time. It was uh, Victor Vito. And then from there, inside ball. And it went into the hands of Gregory Aldridge, who was able to score the try. So we'll write that one down, Aldrit, in the 29th minute, picking up the first try of this match for it was La Rochelle. We have got my best mate, um, Greg Fick. Um, so it's Razor gets a nod. He will be out. See, So that is interesting who they are going to go with head coach for the Crusaders if they do get rid of um, Scott Robertson. It's going to be a, um, a bit of a rebuilding. I guess you could say a rebuild, but I feel like the Crusaders, they are a skilled enough team that they will be able to just pick up from where they left off as well. Just return from the gas station. Reckon, reckon I'm a, um, going to crash out, but I'll keep the stream on. Reckon you need um, good to sleep too, said Mike Jones Sr. Yeah, I feel like at this stage, I kind of committed to the watching these games, and I feel like I don't want to give up on it now. Are you doing another stream for Exeter Chiefs versus Leinster? Says Finn and McCarthy. That is the plan. It's going to be a 4.30 a.m. start here in New Zealand, but I am hoping to be able to do it. So if you do want to join in for that one, Finnan, it would be very much appreciated. And do let me know who you think is going to be winning that one as well. I think that is the bigger match of the two that is happening at the moment. That one has missed, unfortunately, for Ehio West. So we are sitting 11 
to La Rochelle and it is six to Sale Sharks. I'm watching the game, says Finnan as well. Yeah, hopefully it will be a very exciting one. Alder with a good fin there on the number five, which was Vermont. Exeter is going to win, says Finnan as well. Have you got a score prediction, Finnan? Do let me know what you are thinking for that one. But Aldrit, the French international, um, very well there. That one is taken by Doolin, who is dragged down there by Fafta Clerk. That seems like it's going to be a little bit of a battle. The number 15 for La Rochelle and the number nine for Sale Sharks. That is not a good kick there from Ohio West, unfortunately. And it's only going to get them to the, um, yeah, it's only going to get them to the 22. And Maxi has put, um, what's your end game with your channel? See, that's the thing. The crazy thing to think about is the fact that we had a goal by 2021, the start of 2021, to hit 100 subscribers. And we at the moment, we're sitting on over 1,500. So I feel like my expectations weren't as high as they possibly should have been. But I feel like just doing these live streams, like I just find them so fun. And also just playing Rugby Challenge, recreating the real matches. Like I feel like that's one of those things that I just love doing. And also, I feel like the end goal, though, is to do all of the World Cup games in 2023. That was a good run from Hammersley there. And they have still got that ball. That one is going to be an advantage, and it's a penalty to Sale Sharks there. He did leave his feet, the La Rochelle player, and they are going to be going back now. And is it going to be another three points? Um, no, I don't have a score prediction, says Finnan. I'm hoping it will be a high-scoring affair. But I feel like both of those sides, they have incredible defense. So it's going to be pretty hard to be able to break through. There's not that much people on here this time, says Finnan. Yeah, I feel like it is because of the fact that it is like a middle of the night game. 2.30 a.m. They are going for the post here, Sale Sharks. But yeah, 2.30 a.m. Like I didn't really expect too many people about, but I just decided why not have a look at a little bit of Champions Cup rugby. I don't watch too much of it. Um, like I haven't watched too many other games. I've watched some highlights and they have looked like decent matches, high scoring ones. So hopefully this one won't be any different. But yeah, it is just one of those ones. It's a slightly different style of rugby and I quite enjoy watching it as well as the Southern Hemisphere stuff. And I guess you could also say it is very early scouting for the World Cup in a way and also future competitions. You know, the top 14, they are going to have the Rainbow Cup. I would quite like to watch a few of those games as well. But the only problem, of course, is the fact that they're all on in the middle of the night. And, um, yeah, the sleep, sleep schedule might have a little bit of a battering in that regard. But it is going to be AJ McGinty once again, who is going to be kicking this one at the post. Is he going to be able to get it? And is this game going to be only two points difference between these two sides? Uh, we have got Finn and has said, I quite enjoy your live streams. And I do thank you very much, mate. Oh, he hasn't hit that one well. It has actually hit the post. It's going to be going for the posts, I think was the comment that I made. And that one did hit one of them. It hit the left one. So it did. Wait, it went over. I think it went over in that regard. Did it go over? Yes, it did. It did actually go over from him. So he has done well there. And I mean, points are points. So now it is going to be Sale Sharks 9 and also La Rochelle are going to be sitting on 11 for this one. But yeah, the main thing, like the main goal for the channel also is just to have live streams that you guys like enjoy. And also can like kind of look forward to, if that makes sense, like going for the weekly matches, the likes of Super Rugby, Atera, like having you guys come back each week is pretty awesome. And my cat keeps on coming back too. He is sitting on me at the moment. Been wondering why there's no crowd at in, um, New Zealand games. Uh, what's your view? Said um, said it was Maxi. Oh, that's a cheap shot on Kerbalo there. And we have also got, um, I got to go see you at Exeter Chiefs versus Leinster live stream if you're doing it. That is the plan. <laughs> Rugby Guru has said you look tired. Yeah, mate, it's been a long day, but I decided I'd watch some Northern Hemisphere Rugby. Are you watching the game, uh, Rugby Guru? Do let me know. And also, what time is it in South Africa? I'm still terrible with my time zones, as you all know. But yeah, um, there should be crowds at New Zealand sites. I assume you are meaning why aren't they kind of selling out? And it is a good question because we have seen some very good games, like the game between the Chiefs and the Highlanders earlier on. Um, and um, oh, that one's gone high. We have got think I should join you for some of the live stream I don't do myself. That would actually be kind of cool if we were able to have two of us. Um, we could do like a halftime thing if you are keen, Rugby Guru. I feel weird calling you Rugby Guru, but that is 
the name that you have got. Do you want to come on for half time or in the future? I mean, if you want to come on for half time, do let me know. I can send you an email um, link and we could have us both as the half time chat. If you are keen, if you are watching the game, that is as well. Although I will try and explain everything that has happened. If that is the case, almost goes to Marlon Yard there. But he wasn't quite able to get that one. But Sail Sharks, though, they are trying to go for the side. Of course, Sail Sharks are full of South African players. And you are a proud South African as well. But now it is going to be Kerr Barlow. He is going to be kicking this one. Possibly going for the box kick here. He has kicked it high, very high from Kerr Barlow. It is going to be Hammersley lining it up. He has taken it well. And he has been tackled now by the number 13, which is um, Damarel, I think, or something along those lines. Tell you what, there's a lot of space here for La Rochelle. And it is going to be another try for them here. Oh, the touchy. No, it wasn't the touchy. It was one of the men on the sideline got taken out. It was Dylan Lades. He is South African, if I'm not wrong. <laughs> but maybe um, I could be wrong there. But he has got the try there. And it is Lades who was able to pick up the try. In the 36th minute, well, says the rugby guru, um, surprise score is so tight. Yeah, I wasn't expecting a low scoring game. Like when we had only six all after about 30 minutes. Okay, they are checking to see if it is going to be a try for late. Unfortunately, I'm having a barbecue in a bit, so we'll have to pass this one. Sorry, no worries, mate, at all. Um, you should think so. Um, should run in easily, said um, rugby guru as well. Or oh, was it a knock on from late? Fafta Clerk had the ball in hand. This one could go either way here. What is the call? I think he's knocked it backwards in the end late. I think De Clerk has dropped that one. And from there, I think that one's gone. Oh, it's gone onto the knee of Fafta Clerk, which I guess you could say is a knock on maybe. So it comes off the hand of Lades and then goes onto the knee of De Clerk. So maybe, maybe. It is going to be a knock on here. You should think so. Um, should want to run away easily, and you have put uh, well as well. Yeah, I was expecting a high scoring one like the other matches, and I feel like it's starting to ramp up that way at this stage. They are saying it's clearly backwards, so it is going to be a try to La Rochelle, and that is going to make the score 16 to 9. Knock on, said the rugby guru as well. Yeah, I feel like because of the fact it hits his knee, they haven't really got a good angle here. Like that one, the one that they are showing at the moment makes it look like it's gone backwards. But that other angle, it looked like it did hit the hand and go onto the knee of Fafta Clerk forward, which would be a knock on, if I'm not wrong. But they are checking to see if Lades has gone into touch here. He has scored that one. And I believe that is going to be a try to La Rochelle. They have gone for it here. And now it is going to be a higher West who is going to be kicking this one. But yes, yeah, Sale Sharks. I feel like if they were to win this match, Rugby Guru, you will know my South African um, name pronunciation isn't the best. So I might have to get a couple of lessons from you if they do move on to the semi final. Ehi West now is going to be kicking this one. Yeah, not watching, but from what you said, sounded like a knock. Um, yeah, unfortunately, it's an interesting one. I feel like the camera angles let them down a little bit there because from one angle, it looks like it goes backwards, but from the other, it kind of looked like he knocked it into the knee of Fafta Clerk, and then it bounced off the knee and then ended up going backwards. That one is over from Ehio West, though. Kicking that one successfully, and now we are in the situation of them sitting at 16 to La Rochelle and 9 to Sale Sharks. Actually, that will be 18 to La Rochelle. Uh, we will have a chat about the names here. I struggle with some of them. The likes of, um, I mean, I feel like it's more the fact that I have to try and read them um, off the street um, or off the sheet. Have to go enjoy the stream say, all the way. Says the rugby guru as well. See you later, mate. Enjoy your barbecue. Hope you do have a great time there. It is going to be Doolin now, who has kicked that one for touch, and that one has gone into touch nicely. And now it is going to be a Sail Sharks line out just inside of La Rochelle's half. We're sitting 18 to 9 at the moment at half time. Almost. We've got a couple minutes left of this first half, and hopefully. We will get to see some great rugby in the second as well. At the moment, a nine-point different. But the next match that is going to be happening is going to be in only two hours time, and that is going to be Exeter Chiefs versus... Oh, that looked very flat. That one is going from the number two into the hands of the number seven, four. Um, it would be Gordon, who is in that one. I feel like I've said that wrong. That was an awkward fall for the sales shark man in the ruck there. But they have got this ball now. Let us shell. It is five back to Ehi West. He has kicked that one high. The kick is 
or the chasers are chasing out there. All oh, taken well by Hammersley. He's playing well so far. Are you in Timaru? Said um, Maxing, not quite. I am 30 minutes south in a um, pretty small town compared to Timaru. Kind of halfway in between Timaru and Omaru is um, where I am located. Fifth clerk now is going to be kicking this one high. It is Yard chasing this one. Marlon Yard has been taken out a little bit there. It has taken beautifully from Doolin. And now it is going to be Kerbalo. Goes to Alderit, who is willing to run at the line every day of the week. Now it is going to be Kerbalo. Kicking this one high. It is a kicking fiasco at the moment between these two sides. Fafta Klerk not quite able to take it. And that one has gone forward. So now it is an advantage to the Sale Sharks. Fafta Klerk now is trying to find the man to go to. He has gone back and it has been kicked downfield by. It was McGinty there. And now it is going to be Ohio West trying to find the gap. It has gone out to Lades once again. The man who was able to score the try now it is an inside ball to the number four. And they are just outside of the 22 now on back. Says James Gordon. They have got the penalty there, though. Sale Sharks. And since you have come back, James, I think it has sped up a little bit. I think it was about 6-6 at the time that you did leave. But now we are sitting 18 to La Rochelle and 9 to Sale Sharks. And now they are kicking down the field there. Tom Curry winning the penalty for his side. And that is exactly what he's got to keep on doing. Yeah, that's going to be a very exciting second half between these two sides. Still could go either way. Fafta Clerk not quite able to take that one. He wasn't quite able to catch that one. It was up against the man on the left wing, which is rule for this one. They have taken that one, Sale Sharks. They are going from Fafta Clerk. Now they are using their back line nicely. It is in the hands of McGinty there. I believe it was. Now it is going to be at the 22, Fafta Clerk. Now inside ball there to the number 14. And they have still got this one here. It is going to be the number two now hitting it up. He has been tackled well there, Van der Merwe. by it was Aldrich who was driving him backwards. I'm going to try and find uh, Naruto, Naruto, Naruto versus Bane Anime for my fit. Says James Gordon as well. Tom Curry now having a good run, I believe that was. Now it's Fafta Clerk firing to the number four. They are using their back line nicely. They were looking to fire it wide, but Victor Vito... Did shut that one down. They are still on that 22 line at the moment. Has been fired back now to the number 10, McGinty, who was getting driven sideways. AJ McGinty now it is going to be Fafta Clerk once again, trying to set something up for his side. They are up to 41 minutes at the moment in this first half. Now it is going to be to Clerk going back to Tom Curry. Quick hands out to the man on the winning number 14. Great play there from Sale Sharks. And it's going to be a try for them at the end of this first half. And it was the man in the number 13 jersey, Sam James, who was able to pick up that try. That was a nice little set play there. But he was able to score. I'll have to work out who the number 14 was, I believe. It was McGigan, if I'm not wrong. Quick hands from the man who scored the try, James. Went to McGigan on the outside, then went back on the inside with the offload. Back to Sam James, who was rewarded for the try that he set up. But now that all of a sudden makes this game a lot closer when it comes to that second half, what started as a low scoring one is now well and truly ramping up. And I am looking forward to the second half. But yeah, it's going to be exciting. That is for sure. A good try for Sam James in that center role. They had a last minute change for the La Rochelle side. The number 21, the Jules um, Lebby, has come onto the bench in the number 21 jersey because of the injury of Thomas Arbajon, and that was just before the match as well, which isn't what he would have been wanting. But now it is going to be AJ McGinty, who is going to be taking this kick. Can he make it only a two-point contest once again, going into half time here? McGinty lining it up. He looks focused, and he will be hoping that he will be able to get this one over for Sale Sharks. And if he does, yeah, two-point contest, this match still could go either way, I have a feeling. McGinty now lining it up, and he's missed that one, AJ McGinty, unfortunately. Oh, okay. Okay, it's not halftime. He's going to have the kick again because of some screaming was the call. One of the players for La Rochelle charges, charged forward. He was going for the charge down, but he decided that he was going to yell at him. Well, he just started chanting the war cry at him. He was screaming his head off. And that is why he was put off, apparently. So now it is going to be 
AJ McGinty has got another chance, the number four. And it was uh, number four for that one was um, Romain Sazzi, the captain. So I'm not sure whether that was the best move for the man. But now it is going to be another chance for the Sale Sharks to be within a two-point margin going into half time. AJ McGinty can take his time with this one. I don't think they're allowed to charge this one either. So that is great news for him. He is a very concentrated man. Tell you what, you could hear a pin drop at this ground at the moment with the fact that there are no crowds. Something that I will have to get used to as well, watching these Champions Cup games compared to Super Rugby. McGinty has got the posts in his mindset, in his eyes. Is he going to be able to get this one, AJ McGinty, and make the score 16 to Sale Sharks, 18 to La Rochelle. And that one has gone over that time, which means going into halftime, this match is going to be 18 to La Rochelle and 14, sorry, 16 to the Sale Sharks. The comeback is on. Ever since the Rugby Guru left the chat as well, Sale Sharks were able to start the comeback. So he will be a very happy man when he does get to see this score at halftime. He said that they were going to be able to get it, and maybe they will be able to. But the score at the moment, 16 to the Sale Sharks, 18 to La Rochelle. The tries in that first half were scored by Aldrit in the 20, 29th. Then it was Laid who was able to score it in the 36th. And then also James was able to score in the 41st minute of the first half with a lovely little set play from the Sale Sharks. And then a few penalties early on. It took about 20, 29 minutes before we saw the first try in this match. And now I did say once the first try I scored, these, top, these two sides are just going to be scoring at a just phenomenal rate. And I think that's what we're going to get. Anyone wondering why I seem like I'm all over the place? I am sober. <laughs> but it is 2.52 a.m. at the moment in New Zealand. And I decided I would get up to watch these games because I thought they were going to be some very exciting ones. And it looks like this one is going to be heating up. And hopefully that will be the case. But if you haven't already, be sure to leave a like on this live stream. We are sitting on 10 at the moment, which is actually more than I thought we were going to be able to get for this one. So I do appreciate that. Maybe we can get to 15 by the end of this match. But yeah, it is going to be an extremely exciting one. But yeah, early start to the morning, that is for sure, 2.52 a.m. And at this stage, my next match that I think I am going to be doing is Exeter Chiefs versus Leinster. And that is going to be 4.30 a.m. And then from there, I've got to decide, do I go to sleep or do I just completely pretty much do an all-nighter and then go for the game between the Crusaders and the Hurricanes tomorrow? Because that is a big one. And I feel like, will my brain work better on no sleep or about six hours? We'll have to make that decision. But yeah, let me know what you guys thought of the match so far. And let me know what you think the end score for this one is going to end up being. But yeah, I am excited to see how this goes for the second half. Something I might do is actually, while we are here, um, while we are waiting for the second half to go underway, I might start doing a little bit of editing while you guys are here as well, while we are talking about this game. But yeah, Aldrit scoring in the 29th. And then it was Lades who was able to score on the 36th off a potential knock-on, but it wasn't called in the end. And because of it, it was a try. And then the next try was scored by James. That is Sam James in the midfield for the Sale Sharks with a nice little set play between him and also the man on the wing, McGigan. And the kicking so far from both sides, it's been all right. There's been a couple misses for... Um, I've forgotten his name now, um, Ohio West. I feel like I shouldn't have been able to forget that because of the fact that he is a Kiwi. So I should be doing my best to remember that one. But yeah, it's going to be an interesting one to see who is going to be able to get the better of this second half. And the weird thing is I am actually, the video I am editing is going to be one based on the Exeter Chiefs versus Leinster match. It's going to be a slightly highlights package type thing on Rugby Challenge to see if my result is going to be anywhere near the result for the real-life match. And hopefully that will be the case. Okay, editing might not work because I feel like I make a weird face while I'm editing and you guys will well and truly judge me for it. Because I feel like because I am looking at a wall, no one really sees it. Set an alarm for 4 a.m., then wake up, then go back to sleep, then Super Rugby, says James Gordon. And that might have to be the way to go. And I feel like that is actually a pretty good plan to get some sleep. Because of the fact, I feel like setting an alarm for 4am 
um, then wake up, then go back to sleep, and then Super Rugby. I think I will be finishing this live stream and then roll over straight into the next one. And then from there, I will go into the um, sleep mode from six, maybe six till like six till two, maybe if I'm lucky, I might be going for, and that might be the sleep that we get for the night. And then at least that way, I won't be completely and utterly exhausted. And then also, we've got the side of the fact that then from there, I will be able to do the games of the Champions Cup tomorrow night if I feel like it. But I feel like by then I will be well and truly shattered. But nonetheless, I think I'm also quickly going to edit or um, I actually let Isaac edit the preview. I did mention earlier on about the fact that I was going to be well and truly behind. Um, so I ended up calling in the reinforcements. Isaac ended up coming around and he did help me out and edit the preview for me. He's actually in the background of it as well, which is um, quite funny. But yeah. He is the main editor for that one. So that is going to be coming out tomorrow. So hopefully you guys have been enjoying the videos that we have been putting out lately. Uh, we have been putting in a lot of work and hopefully it is paying off for you guys um, to be enjoying it. We have also got um, set an alarm for 4am, then wake up. Oh, I read that one at 2. Um, you have breakfast, says James Gordon as well. Uh, yeah, I guess that is actually an option as well. And um, hopefully it will all go smoothly. Yeah, it is going to be an exciting one. That is for sure. The Leinster versus Exeter Chiefs game. Hopefully, I will be wide awake for it because we have got a very good match on our hands in that regard. I am going to quickly, if you guys are wondering what all the clicking is, it is actually me. I am slightly doing a little bit of editing for a video that is going to be coming out tomorrow, which is the preview of the match between the Hurricanes and the Crusaders while we are waiting for this match to get back underway. But if you are just tuning in, Aldred, and also Lays able to score the two tries for La Rochelle. And then from there, it was um, James for the Sale Sharks, who was able to score it in that number 13 jersey, linking up with him and McGigan. But yeah, it's going to be an exciting second half, and I am looking forward to it. But yeah, I am just looking at the video that I am going to be editing, um, or that I am editing for the match between the two sides playing. And Isaac is just chilling in the background does look pretty funny. Tell you what, I think I can actually do something about that. One moment. I think I'm going to try and work something out. I don't know why I keep on putting my hand here. <laughs> no idea. But we have also got um, Lol says um, Maxi as well. And we have got what time is the match starting back up? I believe it is going to be starting in about five minutes time or so. Hopefully, um, I might just go and edit mine. Says James Gordon as well. But yeah, I think it is going to be about five minutes time. You're dedicated, bro. Says Maxi, yeah. I feel like that's one of those things. I love watching the rugby and I also love um, just chatting away with you guys. Um, so if it does mean, you know, having to catch up on a little bit of sleep, maybe um, that is what I am willing to do. But I am actually going to quickly see if I can do something. I am going to add a, um, it's not a video clip. It's not a logo either. It is going to be one moment. I am going to try and find it. Where would it have gone? I am looking for a document so that I can show you guys a little sneak peek of the fact that Isaac is going to be in the background for the preview. And there it is, one moment. Can I get that in? Is this going to show up in the background, maybe? I'm not sure. Hard to say, really. <laughs> but yeah, we are waiting for the second half to get underway. If I put that there. Okay, that is me in the background. How do I get rid of me for a moment? I'm just going to quickly remove me so you guys can see. So yeah, it is going to be exciting to see how this match is going to be finishing. But we will go back to the plain background as well. I guess we could go with a Six Nations one a little bit later on, perhaps. Um, we have got, I'll be right back, says uh, James Gordon as well. But yeah, this is going to be an exciting matchup for this second half, that is for sure. I'm excited. I keep on saying I'm excited. I feel like that's the word that comes to mind when I think of why I am up at 3 a.m. And I was just excited. You know, we are going to get to see some good rugby on the cards. Hopefully, the match between Leicester and Exeter Chiefs is a high-scoring one as well. So we do get to see quite a few tries throughout that one. But yeah, I am excited. I said it again. Every time I said I am excited, if I had a dollar for every time I said I am excited, we would have a new gaming setup by now for the channel. That is for sure. I am just going to quickly type that. Boom. 
Okay, that already really exists. So we are going to go boom, and that is good to go. Right, the second half must not be too far away at the moment. I am excited. Oh, I said it again. I'd have another dollar. But yeah, it's going to be a good match. That is for sure. Hopefully, it does deliver in the second half. 16 to Sale Sharks, 18 to La Rochelle at halftime. Very good stuff. Right, I am going to quickly go like that. Right, I am good to go. We are getting ready for the second half now. And yeah, hopefully it is going to be a very good one. We have got the likes of Tom Curry out there. Also Dupre, two Dupre's I should mention, Beaumont in the um yeah in the forward back for sale sharks and that's another thing i feel like i am going to be watching one of the games on it will be sunday night and kind of early monday morning because of the fact that i haven't actually been able to see chisel and colby play a game live and i think he is actually in one of the sides is he maybe not i think he is i think he's in one of the teams who are playing in the um one of the other quarterfinals of the champions cup so yeah, hopefully I will get to see him. See, I feel like, yeah, anytime I eat it, I make a funny face. So I'm going to stop doing that and we will be waiting for the second half to get underway now. And it is going to be a very, very entertaining one. That is for sure. I feel like I should have been possibly working on the um, thumbnail for the next video that we are going to be doing which is the Exeter Chiefs versus Leinster. But yeah, I do thank you all very much for tuning in. It is very much appreciated that you guys are chilling out here. And um, yeah, it, is, or it isn't quite as early morning for you guys as it is here. But um, yeah, it is still very much appreciated that you guys are hanging around and you have been enjoying the videos as well. Because it just makes it even that much more like kind of entertain or not entertaining but more um motivating i should say for us to keep on going and we are waiting for the second half to go underway i said five minutes but i feel like it is going to be about a 10 to 15 minute break and i have actually still got the um i have just noticed i have still got the chiefs jersey on they were able to get the win against the highlanders in extra time of super rugby at that old golden point we should call it and yeah it was a very exciting match I just said exciting match again. And we have also got, um, do you like UFC? I do enjoy watching UFC Maxi. Um, it's one of those ones, I feel like I go through kind of trends of sport. Like uh, probably about six months ago, I was just watching every UFC um, event, like paying for the pay-per-views and everything like that. And it's one of those ones that like I've kind of, unfortunately I haven't had as much time to be able to watch it, but I have quite a few sports that I like to follow. The likes of, I quite enjoy cricket. I like um, UFC as well. And um, also a bit of rugby league when I do get the chance. But yeah, it is hard to squeeze it all in while also trying to watch all of the rugby that it's on because we have had so much of it lately. But yeah, once it starts coming down, I will get a chance um, to go back to watching a lot more of those other ones. And one thing is, I will actually, while I am here, I should mention as well, we are going to go like this because Maxi, this channel, hopefully you will enjoy it. If you also do like UFC, I am going to put into the chat. That is the link to the Kiwi Lad Sport channel. We have recently launched it. It was the Kiwi Lads podcast, but now it is Kiwi Lad Sport. And a watch along UFC event could be on the cards for that channel. Um, if that is something you guys do want to see as well. It's kind of going to be every other sport that I am like not going to be uploading on the main channel. The cat is looking pretty comfy at the moment. It's moving around. Um, my money is on La Rochelle. Yeah, I feel like mine was the same up until that last try for sale. Sharks, they look like they're starting to fight back a little bit. And I am excited to see what is going to happen in the second half. Do let me know, Linton, what is your score prediction for this one? It's going to be it's going to be a good second half. I have a feeling we could have another maybe 20 or so points on the cards for maybe both sides. I think we're going to have someone getting up to 30 points um, pretty soon into this first or second half. We have also got, um, or just rugby said, Linton as well. I should actually pin that, shouldn't I? The comment so that you guys can see. We did actually do a Cricket 19 IPL play along and it was myself and also my dad, which was pretty awesome. 
um, that we were able to do a video like that. A video on that channel actually went out very recently, and I think it's done pretty badly. <laughs> I think it's got like six views in an hour and a half, but that is all right. No worries there. We have also got, yeah, it's going to be exciting. Oh, I said exciting again. Tell you what, if I say exciting too many more times, I'm going to run out of words. It's gone completely silent in my ears for the coverage, which I assume means we are close to getting back underway. Yes, we are. La Rochelle making their way back onto the field at Ohio West. And also, it is Will Skelton who is having a bit of a chat. What are they talking about? That's a big question. I am excited. They haven't got sound at the moment, so hopefully that does kick in very soon and we will be right back underway for the second half of this match. All of the officials and the coaches and whatnot are coming out. That is going to be Lloyd, who's making, or Lades, who is going to be making his way onto the field. He had a good first half, was able to pick himself up a try. It's going to be Ehi West, who is going to be kicking this one off. Perhaps they were discussing the skeleton to possibly chase this kick. We'll have to wait and see what happens here. But yeah, it's going to be exciting. Second half is said exciting again. I have said it way too many times. Hopefully it does go away before the Exeter Chiefs versus Leinster game. It's 3.05 a.m. So I feel like I get a little bit of a pass there. But at the moment, La Rochelle 18, Sale Shark 16. Who is going to be able to win this match? And who is going to be moving on to that semi-final? It is the first of four quarterfinals matches. It's taken well by Dupreya there. And that one is um, Jean-Luc Dupre, I believe. Now it is going to be De Klerk who is going to be firing it back. He was a little bit quiet in that first half, Faf De Klerk. Probably a little bit more quiet than he would have wanted to be, but he is a very talented player. And I feel like if he does get the chance, he will be able to turn it up in the second half. It's being chased hard. That one has gone into touch there from the kick off Faf De Klerk. And are they going to be taking this one quickly? I'm not sure because my coverage has actually frozen. And that one has gone out. Victor Vito wasn't quite able to get that one. So it is going to be the line-out throw now to La Rochelle. But yeah, exciting stuff. That is for sure. Aldrit, they are showing. Perhaps he is going to be the man who has lifted, although they do love to go to Victor Vito in those ones. So maybe they will be going with that once again. It is going to be the number two there, which is in this one. It is going to be um, Bergeret. Hopefully I've said that right, but that is taken by Kubalo. Now it's EIO West with the inside ball now. It's a beautiful one. What a step from the number 11 there. That was raw when he has scored the try for La Rochelle. And you may have just made your money, Linton, because that was a beautiful step from the man, Raymond Rule, in the number 11 jersey. What a step from that man. And he has scored a try very early on in the second half. The South African international, I believe he is. And he has just done very well off the set play. There was Ehi West inside ball to the man rule. And that is a step and a half. He had the support run of the number 12 if he did need him. But he didn't. He was too talented, too powerful with that step as well. That was a mean sell of the dummy to the number 14. And he does score the early try in this half for La Rochelle. And now this one is going to be a nice easy kick out in front for Ehi West as well. So he should be able to get this one over, and that would make the score in this one. We would be looking at a total of, I believe, if he can get this one, we will be looking at 25 to 16, which is a decent lead. But maybe they will need more sail sharks. I feel like they're going to fight back in this one. I will actually have a quick look. I did a um, rugby challenge highlights video of this match just because I decided I would see how close my score would be to the real one. We'll have a quick look to see what the score in my match actually was. But the line out, it was beautiful from La Rochelle there. He high west inside ball. And it went to the man in the number 11 jersey rule. Too strong, Raymond rule. Too quick. And he just sells the dummy. And he does a little step and scores the try. Um, have you done much commentary development? Says um, Maxi. Is that as in like kind of courses um, in terms of like broadcasting school? And whatnot, Maxi, or uh, do let me know. But that one is Fafta Clerk's ball. Now they are inside of the 22. So all Sharks, can they fight back straight away? It is in the hands of Hammersley. Now they are firing it out to the man on the wing. He is marked, though, by Rule, who has made a very good low tackle there. But Sale Sharks, only 15 metres out now. They will be hoping that they will be able to turn this into seven more points for them. It is going to be Fafta Clerk goes to Curry, who has a run. At the line now, it's going to be to Clerk with a short ball to the number two there. 
which is um, Van der Merwe. But in, it is going to be a penalty to La Rochelle. Well done there from the big men. In the fourth back, I am going to have a quick scroll through to my one. And the end score in that one, the end score in mine was 35-26 to La Rochelle. 35-26. I'm writing that down because I feel like that might not be a mile off in this match, which is a very exciting news. But yeah, that one is going to be kicked into touch there by La Rochelle. They are saying that they should keep on scoring here, La Rochelle, or else Sail Sharks might be able to fight back. And it is going to be interesting to see how this is going to play out. At the moment, they have got a nine-point lead, but we did see in Super Rugby Aotearoa earlier on between the Hurricanes, or sorry, the Highlanders and the Chiefs. They had a nine-point lead, but then that got closed down completely. I don't think they, or do they go to Golden Point? What happens if we are in a draw in a Champions Cup quarterfinal? Anyone in the chat, do let me know if you do know. Now it's going to be Kerbalo firing it back. Now he is going himself. He's run into the wall. That is Dan Dupre, I believe that was. Now it is going to be Aldrit. Goes to Will Skelton, who has tackled low by Tom Curry. Around the side once again was Aldrit. They've dove on that ball, and that's going to be a penalty to La Rochelle. Giving it away, unfortunately, there was um, the number. He's got to turn a little bit for me to work out who he is. But it was one of the forwards. For them, who is it going to be? I'm trying to look at the number. He is well and truly protecting the number. It was the number one, which was um, Bevan Rod in the end. Yes, finally got a clip, says um, James Gordon as well. So that is good news for you, mate. But yeah, that one has been kicked into touch by La Rochelle once again. And that is one of those things. Sales Sharks can't really get away with giving away too many penalties because every time it has happened, they are just building their way towards the end goal line there. But yeah, La Rochelle, not quite. Oh no, the first yawn. As soon as we hit the first yawn, we're downhill from here, ladies and gentlemen. It is currently 3.12 a.m. in New Zealand. And I am sitting up for this game. Also, hopefully going to be sitting up for the next game as well. And yeah, just whatever um, said, Maxi. I haven't actually done any kind of commentary um, practice or anything. I guess just from playing Rugby Challenge, I kind of used to, um, or we do the commentary on those games. And I feel like that's kind of just developed into me um, kind of being able to slightly do it for these matches. I'm not the best at it yet, but I feel like I have improved. Like the first time, oh, that was well done from the number two, but unfortunately dropped the ball. So now it's a knock on it, knock on advantage. Um, it's similar to radio commentary, eh? Says um, uh, Maxi as well. Yeah, I feel like that would be kind of like the best comparison to kind of what we do um, on the channel for these live streams. It's kind of radio with a little bit more um, interaction because of the fact that we do talk to you guys at the same time. Oh, that is taken out in the air by rule. Luckily, didn't land awkwardly, and it's another penalty against the Sale Sharks. It's 5 p.m. in Zimbabwe, says Linton. That is a lot better than a being 3 um, a.m., that is for sure. But yeah, it will be a nice afternoon game. Um, have you, do you watch the games um, as in um, live? Um, Linton in my brain has stopped working. I'm going to make me weak fix, says James Gordon as well. Yeah, do you watch them um, or do you just listen to the commentary side of it? Do let me know. But yeah, unfortunately, did take the man out in the air. It's just lucky that he did end up not landing too awkwardly. Tell you what, he did actually land on his face. So probably a little bit lucky not to receive a card there. The number 14 for the Sale Sharks, which in this one is Byron McGigan. Hopefully I've said that right. McGigan, yeah, I believe it is. Oh, I'll tell you what, Kerbalo's given that one up a little bit soft there. And it is now in the hands of Sale Sharks. Are they going to be able to score soon? Fafta Clerk with the box, box kick. It is going to be taken there. And he has got the timing right that time. He didn't take him out in the air. And now there is a penalty. And it is going to be to, no, it's to the Sale Sharks now. Which means now we are going to have, I think it is a knock on. So we are going to be going back. And it is going to be a scrum 47 Minutes into this one, almost 48. And at the moment, nine points different. La Rochelle leading this one, 25 to 16. And I have a big question, which is, if Sale Sharks did get a penalty somewhere in kicking range, would they take on the kick or would they go for the corner? It is something that I would be quite excited to see. But yeah, does anyone know what happens if it is actually a draw 
in this match, do we end up going to golden point or is it based off some sort of points differential? Um, I would assume it's golden point though, which would be a pretty awesome way to end this match purely because of the fact that we've already had it today for Super Rugby Atera and um, we could have it again in the Champions Cup. And now it is going to be Faf de Klerk who is going to be feeding this ball into the scrum for the Sail Sharks. They are 40 metres out at the moment, maybe around 35, but they need to work their way towards that goal line if they do want a chance of being able to win this match. That's a great scrum, though, from La Rochelle, and they have won the penalty. Well, they've got the advantage, Victor Vito, with the inside ball, and I think they will be trying to drive forward here, La Rochelle. Kurt Barlow tries a little kick in behind, goes straight into the hands of Faf de Klerk, and now it is going to be a penalty for the scrum. That was a very good scrum from La Rochelle there. They are looking like the stronger four-pack. They have got some huge men in there. Will Skelton's one that you've got to look at and think, how are you supposed to stop him in a scrum? And then we have also got, I watch the Super Rugby AU and Aotearoa games, but can't watch the Champions Cup as well, says Linton. Uh, so yeah, it is a bit of a shame that these games, I feel like these games aren't being shown in as many locations as like they should be kind of thing. Because I'd love to see, it's like Super Rugby Aotearoa and also Super Rugby AU. Like the likes of USA, I think they struggle to find it in the USA. I think it is Rugby Pass though. Are you watching on Rugby Pass, Linton? Um, do let me know. And we have also got, um, there must be a formula um, that can support you, said uh, Maxi as well. Um, yeah, I'm hoping just with, if we keep on continuing to build the channel, perhaps then from there, who knows, maybe it could lead to a job opportunity in the future. Like it's one of those ones that it does take up quite a lot of time. Like, I mean, I'm probably, I want to say like, 12 hours a day doing these like even if it's just editing a video or planning or anything like that like it's been pretty non-stop since starting um the channel back up in about i think it's about nine months ago that we did start it back up but yeah hopefully you know it, it does end up leading to something would be pretty awesome it is going to be a kick for has he got this one any higher west no he hasn't it's gone out to the right there and he won't be too happy with that um i watch on dstv as well has said Linton, I miss Vito's days at the Hurricanes, the yellow machine. That was super good. Yeah, he was a talented player in Super Rugby. And that's one of those cool things about these matches that I am watching um, for the Champions Cup. Like you see all those players that you go, I wonder where they ended up. And you find them. It's like, um, you know, you've got Ehia West, you've got Kerbalo, you've got Victor Vito, like all on the same team. And then the game between Exeter and Leinster, I think we've got a few Kiwis maybe in there, or we've got James Lowe, who's kind of a Kiwi, but not really, but then also, um, who else have we got? I'm looking through the lineups, and I'm not really recognising too many Kiwi names, so maybe it was in a couple of the other ones that there were a few Kiwis, but now the Sail Sharks are inside of their 22. They are trying to rebuild here, and try and get up the field. That's the thing, Fafta Clerk, he has had to kick this ball away a lot of times throughout this match, and I feel like eventually, maybe if that doesn't start leading to points, they will have to try a different strategy. It is going to be now Doolin, who has done the little kick. It is a cross kick as well. It's an awkward bouncing one there. And he has slipped a little bit. And tell you what, that's a bit of skill. And that's going to be a try there for the man in the number 11 jersey. Take a bow, son. That was rule. And that was a phenomenal try. I wish you guys could have seen that one. I will try my best to explain it. They are going to be checking it. So maybe it wasn't a try yet, but that was actually phenomenal. So pretty much what happened there was it was a little kick. From, I believe it was um, it was Doolin who did the little kick in behind. He kicked it out to the wing. That was um, the side that Rule was on. And then from there, the number 15, Simon Hammersley, just ended up slipping. It was an awkward one. They are checking this one. He runs forward here. And yeah, he just doesn't quite get it with his foot. Then he slips. And then from there, he just kicks it forward, the number 11 Rule. And then he dove on that ball and scores the try for his side. I feel like there is nothing wrong with that one. And that one will be a try. And that try could have just made it so that La Rochelle are going to be moving on to the semi-final. But my live stream at the moment keeps on freezing in terms of the watching the game on Sky Go. So that is not great news. But hopefully it does come right very soon. And we will get right back to the live action. But it's going to be a higher West who is going to be kicking this one for the La Rochelle side. Is he going to be able to get this one over? And if he does, no, he's missed that one again there. Ehia West, that is unfortunate for the man. He hasn't had the best day with the boots so far, but Doolin with the little chip in behind. 
And that was just phenomenal skill from Rule. When the highlights are uploaded, you guys will get to see that and it will be very impressive. I'm actually a rugby ref here in Zimbabwe, says Linton, which is pretty awesome. Um, are you kind of like the um, kind of minor leagues or are you um, quite a well-known uh, refer referee? Linton, do let me know. Also, um, I feel like, is it quite a popular sport in Zimbabwe? Because of the fact that they are in a qualifying game for the World Cup, aren't they? If I'm not wrong, or if they are one of the top African sides, they will get to go through um, into the World Cup, which would be pretty awesome. Or oh, that's a good kick there from Doolin once again. Are they going to take it quickly? No, they are not. And the Lara shall now put out, pouring on the pressure. And they are starting to make the subs, which is where my knowledge of these players will start to disappear a little bit because of the fact that I am pretty much relying on reading the names of the paper pretty much for some of these guys. Hopefully I have been able to um, keep you guys informed. And we have also got level one ref at the moment. So is it um, is it kind of level one, level two and working up like that in terms of like kind of what is the, kind of what's the average level that someone is? And um, yeah, I'm quite curious because that's a weird thing. Um, back at school, I actually... Like when they were playing rugby league and whatnot on the field, I was actually, I quite enjoyed being the referee. Like just because of the fact that, I mean, I wasn't the biggest kid and yeah. So I was more than likely going to end up probably ending up with a broken bone at some stage. But like I quite enjoyed the aspect of refereeing as well. Uh, rugby is actually, um, said um, Linton as well. That is not going out there. La Rochelle have kept this ball and they have been turning it up in the second half or in the first half of the second half. So the first third quarter is what I'm trying to say there. Doolin now goes to Lloyds, who is out or Lades. He did get hit a little bit high there. And it is going to be a penalty to Sale Sharks. They are 14 points behind here, so I don't think they can afford to go for the three points. I think they've got to go for it. And they do have to kick for the corner. This was kept in beautifully by La Rochelle. It is that man once again. It was rule. And he's having a phenomenal game, it's fair to say. And I feel like, yeah, it was a big moment if that ball had been able to go out for Sale Sharks, but now they are back in that corner. They will be going for the rolling mall as well. We have also got, um, once you get to level three, then you can start refereeing international games, says Linton. So I guess level two, would that be the likes of, I'm not sure whether you follow um, New Zealand rugby completely, but, you know, kind of like the Mitre 10 Cup, would that be considered level two or is super rugby level two kind of thing? Um, oh, that's a good counter arc from La Rochelle. And they are well and truly pouring on the pressure. Fafta Clerk was sitting there looking as if he had no idea how it was happening. But at the moment, they are just pouring on that well and truly pressure of the French side. We have got on back, says James Gordon. Welcome back, mate. It is good to see you. It is still an early morning start, that is for sure. But yeah, we are doing... Um, yeah, we are doing all right so far. The tiredness hasn't quite set in. We've had one yawn. But that is all we have had so far. Bro, um, I need to go do some writing, says Max as well. No worries, mate. Thank you very much for tuning in. Um, I do appreciate it. And, yeah, it was fun chatting with you. And hopefully we will see you again in the future. That one is won by the number four. Four Sail Sharks. They need a set play and they need it now. That is a good run from the number 12. It's straight in there. Was La Rochelle. Fafta Clerk has got his hands on the ball there. And that one has been passed. And Fafta Clerk there. It is going to be in the hands of La Rochelle now. And there's a knock-on advantage. Fafta Clerk is not very happy at all at the moment. And yeah, at the moment, it just doesn't seem to be going his way. Oh yeah, I've also got level two. You can um, get the minor 10 type of game. So that is pretty awesome. So that will be... Um, oh, that was a terrible pass from Fafta Clerk there, unfortunately for him. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, it's one of those ones. I hope you will be... I um, assume, is that your career path that you are going to be hoping to... Go towards Linton or have you got um, another job at the same time? Because that would be pretty awesome being an international rugby ref. Of course, a lot of pressure on those fellas, but um, it would be pretty awesome getting to hang out with the sides as well. What does lockdown feel like? Says James Gordon. Is that to me or to Linton? Um, I'm actually planning to move to New Zealand and improve, says Linton. So that is pretty awesome. You'll possibly get yourself a job for the Mighty 10 um, Cup games or maybe even Super Rugby. Uh, we'll check back and like um, I said, maybe I can help you out in some way, said Maxi. And yeah, um, I am always open to that. Do you have an Instagram or anything like that, um, Maxi, that may be a little bit easier to contact you um, discussing it? 
do let me know. And if you haven't got Instagram, maybe um, could give you the Kiwi Lads email, perhaps if that is something you are keen on. Everyone says James Gordon and as well. What does lockdown feel like? I feel like lockdown for me, it's going to sound weird, but lockdown didn't really change too much because of the fact that like before lockdown, I was spending all this time in front of my computer editing videos pretty much. And then now um, when like we had the lockdown, it was probably just kind of the same thing, except um, yeah, it was just that whole thing of you weren't actually able to go out and about. That one is going back for the penalty. Delaro show at the moment. The Sale Sharks are getting penalised out of this match. And that is not what they would be wanting. Fafter Clerk looks like he is off the field now. He is not very happy at all. Now, um, I haven't been in lockdown before, says um, James Gordon as well. Um, so are you in New Zealand, James? Or are you in Australia? Do you let me know? Because um, the whole of New Zealand did go into that lockdown, didn't we? If I'm not wrong. But yeah, uh, do you let me know. But Fafter Clerk, he looks like a pretty upset man. He's not very happy with the performance, not very happy with how this match has been going. But La Rochelle at the moment, or La Roche, have just been pouring on that pressure, like I mentioned, and it has been rewarding them with points. Um, I see we have limited movement and wearing masks, but not too bad, says uh, Maxi as well. And we have got Take Care All from Maxi in the chat as well. We will see you later, mate. Thank you very much for tuning in. And I do appreciate it a lot. Hope you enjoyed as well. It is a rolling mall now for La Roche. Are they going to be able to get something going here? It is the number two off the back. He's found a big gap there. The number two. It's got Lades on his outside. He's going to use him. Yes, he has, but he's given him the most awkward pass. But he has somehow been able to take that one. Now it's going to be Aldrit, who is driving forward. They're inside of the 22. That one has popped out. And because of it, it is going to be to, in the hands of Sail Sharks, the replacement number 21 is Rafi Quirk, I believe it is, for the Sail Sharks. Take care all. And was what um, Maxi said as well. That one has gone high there from Quirk, I believe the name is, or Quirk. And that one is taken by Doolin, who isn't going to be taking that one quickly there. He has decided to just let that one play out. And it is now going to be a line out to La Roche. We have got, when I was in Australia, you were in lockdown. Then you went out of lockdown and then went to NZ. Ah, okay, so you haven't actually had the full um, lockdown experience. But yeah, hopefully all of the games for Super Rugby Trans-Tasman do get to take place because of the fact that they are going to be um, those games that are kind of like, um, kind of uh, words. <laughs> they are the games that are going to be played. Trans-Tasman kind of thing. So a lot of travel there. Now it's going to be Kerbalo, goes to Ehi OS, goes to Will Skelton, now having a good run. We have got Blue Line Patrol, as said, sorry lad, just woke up and um, got to go to work. Sorry, I can't watch your stream, no worries, mate. Um, you enjoy your day at work as well. Um, yeah, bro, give me the email, says uh, Maxi as well. And I will quickly type this one. I believe it is this. <laughs> I haven't actually given out the email to too many people. So um, hopefully it is going to be the right one. I've got, um, I believe it is that, if I'm not wrong. <laughs> but yeah, um, do give it a look. Now they are attacking once again here. It is going to be Doolin with the white ball. Out to the man in the number 11, Jersey Rule. And when he gets ball in hand, he looks dangerous. Inside ball to the number 13. And that's going to be the try for La Roche. And the number 13, Sam James. No, it's not. It's the number 13. Duma Dumaru. Hopefully I said that relatively right, but he has scored again. And it is the man in the number 13 jersey. And it's just an incredible performance. I feel like man of the match at the moment has to go to that number 11, which is Raymond Rule. He has been on fire throughout this match so far, and it has been leading to a lot of points for his side as well. I am going to write that one down. And it was a very good one. And we have got Sweet As. We'll flick you an email. Says uh, Maxi as well. And yeah, hopefully, um, yeah, we will be able to find um, some way if you do want to help out that you will be able to. And I mean, that's the thing. A lot of you guys are very knowledgeable when it comes to rugby. Like I have only really been starting to really follow rugby kind of over the last couple of years. So I feel like like the knowledge that you guys can bring to the channel as well. Like, um, yeah, it's huge. And it is very helpful indeed. Now it's going to be, um, yeah, I always do, is going to be taking this kick. Is he going to be able to make it into possibly completely and utterly out 
overreach. Uh, what's that for, says James Gordon? That is so that um, he can um, contact rather than in the comments, just to make it a little bit easier. Um, but yeah, that one was Damaru, who was able to score a try for La Roche. And at this stage, they are steaming ahead to be able to go to the semi final and take on. I'm not sure who they take on, but they are showing, I believe it is. Exeter Chiefs versus Leinster is going to be the game straight after this one at 4.30. But they are showing Fafta Clerk, unfortunately for him, just hasn't quite gone his side's way. And now it is going to be his replacement passing the ball off to one of the big forwards of Sale Sharks. They are almost completely out of this match, but I feel like if they can get a few quick tries here, maybe it's not completely over. And that will be exactly what they are hoping to do. And they are looking like they are going to be kicking for touch, I believe, in this situation. Yeah, my brain stopped working there for a second. I feel like the tightness has started creeping in a little bit. The pass just not quite working there for the Sail Sharks. But it was very nicely done almost from Sail Sharks. Was fired wide, but just not quite able to get the execution right there. Now it is going to be a line out to Sail Sharks. Time is back on. There's only 16 and a half minutes left in this matchup. And now it is going to be the throw of the number two for La Roche. And it is going to be um, Bergarit, I believe it is, if I'm not wrong. I am struggling with some of these French names, but hopefully we'll get the hang of them. Come on, La Roche, says Jeremy Coy as well. And at the moment, yeah, 37 to 16. They have been playing very well. And that's one of those things. The number 11, I feel like he's got to be close to man of the match rule because he has been setting up everything. That's a great run there, though, from the number 14, I believe it was. If I'm not wrong now, it is going to be all popped out for Sale Sharks. And now it is a counterattack for Le Roche. Are they going to be going back? It is going to be a penalty instead. And that is a very good one for Le Roche. If they can take the three here, they will be leading. 40 points to 16, or maybe they go for the corner, try and pour on the pressure there. And there's a bit of push and shove going on out there as well. Unfortunately for Sale Sharks, it just hasn't quite been going their way this match. They had too many penalties against them. And La Roche, they have been taking their chances and they have been rewarded with a lot of points as well. But yeah, it is going to be interesting. Do let me know, Jeremy Coy, what you think the end score in this match is going to be. We have got around 15 minutes left. Do you think La Roche will be able to score another one or two tries, or do you think Sarah, or sorry, not Saracen, Sail Sharks might be able to fight back a little bit in this one? Do let me know. They are showing the man in the number 11 jersey. I think he is getting taken off the field by the looks of it. Or maybe he was just chatting to someone on the sideline. It is going to be Ohio West who is going to be kicking this one at the post here. And he will be hoping to be able to put this one straight down the middle, which would lead to a 24-point lead for the La Roche side. And that will certainly be helping them get towards that final. Because I haven't actually looked to see who plays who on these kind of like arrangements. Because is it the fact that whoever wins this game plays Exeter Chiefs or Leinster, or is it the other side of the draw with Bordeaux or Racing 92? Or uh, I'm trying to think of all the team's names, and that was the only two I could think of. That one has gone over from Air High West. And that means that now the score is going to be 40 to La Roche and 16 to Sale Sharks. Like they are saying, it just hasn't really been the day of the Sale Sharks. Hasn't been going their way. And La Roche have been taking their chances as well. Few changes are being made. Or well, I believe it is La Rochelle. One calls it La Rochelle, one calls it La Roche. So I'm not too sure what one to call it. But they are taking off their number four and the number 12 for La Rochelle. But yeah, the likes of Tom Curry and also a couple of Dupres, we haven't really seen too much of them so far. Kerr Barlow taking that one nicely there. And he has been taken inside, or it is still inside, they are saying. So he is allowed to kick this one out on the full. It is going to be Doolin who is kicking that one away. Decent kick from him, but it is only going to be about 30 metres out from the line. If they get the comeback here, Sale Sharks, it will certainly be a phenomenal one. That is for sure, but it is going to be hard work for them. And it is going to be interesting to see if it is going to be able to happen. I'm about to sneeze, which is rather unfortunate. <coughs> I just sneezed. 
Yeah, I'm tired. <laughs> it is fair to say. 3.30 a.m. New Zealand time. And it is going to be interesting to see if I am going to be able to last throughout this one. And also, the Exeter Chiefs versus Leinster match. We have got Sharks are out of this match. La Rochelle um, have been dominant. Yeah, it's just one of those ones. When it's your day, it's your day. And La Rochelle, they haven't been giving away too many penalties. And because of it, it has just been leading to them being able to get a lot of points on the board. And the wingers have been doing their jobs. The two South Africans, Rule and also Lates, have scored three. That one's hit the foot. So that means that it isn't a knock-on. Now it is in the hands of one of those two men. It was a rule there. That one has been charged down from Kerbalo's kick. And now it is in the hands of the Sale Sharks. 30 metres out. Can they get a try in the next few minutes here? The Sale Sharks, they will be wanting to. That's going to be the number nine. Or sorry, the number 21. He has come on the field. And it is, I believe, um, Quirk who has got that one. Now they are going to be driving for once again. Sazzy, the captain, has been taken off the field now. And it is going to be Lavant who has made his way onto it. Feel like my pronunciation of some of those French names still isn't the best. That was a flat pass from Sam um, James. And now it is going to be Tom Curry goes to the number eight here, which is Dan Dupreer, who we haven't seen too much of as the next stream at 4 a.m. It is going to be at 4.30 is um, when the match between Leinster and also, um, yeah, Exeter Chiefs starts, which is going to be an exciting one, that is for sure. Um, but yeah, 4.30 is the time that the next one is going to be happening, James. So, yeah, feel free to tune in if you are keen to watch a little bit more of this Northern Hemisphere rugby that we have got ourselves on the cards for tonight. And then also, yeah, we have got the live stream tomorrow, which is going to be the match between the um, Crusaders and the Hurricanes. That's going to be a 3.30 p.m. game. So hopefully I am wide awake for that one as well. I am kind of doing two things at once at the moment. I am trying to like slightly edit as well as um, watch this game. But Doolin was the man who they were showing just there. Had a decent game so far. Set up the little chip in behind that did get. Um, it was rule one of his tries. But pretty much all of the subs have been made now for La Rochelle. So I will be hoping to close out this game with possibly 24 points as the marginal. Maybe a few more if they can get lucky here. Now it is going to be going to the number eight, Victor Vito. Now it goes into the hands of Ehoa West. Offloads are now in his lanes. Who's going up the middle of the South Africans I was mentioning? And now it is going to be the man in the number 13. Jersey scores again. And that is another one for La Roche. I'm running out of space on my paper to write how many tries these men have been scoring. He has picked himself up the second try of the second half from the man in the number 13. Jersey, it was Jeffrey um, Dalmaru. Hopefully I said that somewhere right. But he has been a very talented player in this match and has just been rewarded with more points as well. But yeah, the back line of La Rochelle has been looking phenomenal off the set play as well, off the line out. That's about the second or third set play try that they have been able to score. And it was just a very nicely creative opportunity for them. And they keep on taking their chances here, La Rochelle. And I feel like it is going to be one of those ones that maybe they could end up scoring once or twice more. But the Sail Sharks just, just haven't quite been able to get this one right in this match so far. But looking at the score, yeah, 40 to 16. Could be a runaway, well and truly, for them here. We have got Superior Entertainment um, Solutions NZ has got a message retracted, so I'm not too sure what they said. But I will read it out if you do put it again. It is going to be Ehi West who is going to be kicking this one now. We have got only 50 minutes to our next live stream, which will be the match between the Exeter Chiefs and Leinster. It's going to be an exciting one, hopefully a high-scoring one as well. So feel free to tune into that if you are looking forward to a bit of rugby. Ehi West has hit the post there. That one hasn't gone over. So that means that the score now is still going to be 40 to the... Um, or oh, sorry, it's not 40, it's 45 now, isn't it? They've got a 24-point margin already. Now it is going to be 45 to La Roche and 16 to the Sail Sharks. That one has been kicked short. It has been taken there by almost by the number 19. It just sat on Skelton's shoulder and he was able to take that. Um, Later's going back to sleep. Just thought I would stop by. And I do appreciate that, Matt. Hope you did, mate, I called you Matt accidentally, <laughs> mate. But yeah, hopefully you did enjoy. And um, yeah, I hope to see you at some stage, maybe for the match tomorrow or today, I guess it is now, isn't it? Because of the fact that we are 
sitting at 3.40 a.m. But Kerbalo, they are showing he's had a decent game, but he has been taken off the field, and Bijan is going to be making his way onto it now, and he will be hoping to have a bit of an impact for the side. Yeah, Kerbalo, good game. Now that one has gone straight down the middle. Now it is going to be a backline movement for South Sharks. I accidentally looked straight into my light, and now I've got like a ring. Uh, <laughs> looking forward to tomorrow's stream. I'm going to be a ripper. Yeah, and hopefully I will be wide awake for it as well. I have been debating whether or not to kind of do this live stream as, um, or doing the next live stream, do I go to sleep after it or do I stay up for the whole um, night kind of thing? But I think I will end up going to sleep, possibly having two, two separate sleeps because <laughs> I might need them. But yeah, it is a late night, that is for sure. And hopefully... We will be able to get through the match between Exeter and Leinster. If not, I might have to call it quits halfway through it. But hopefully we will get through. But they are showing Raymond uh, Roy is going to be the player of the match. And he has been playing extremely well. So I don't think there could be any arguments in terms of who was going to be the man of the match for this one. Uh, we have also got um, probably going to be the best game of the weekend, says Superior Entertainment Solutions NZ. And that's the thing, best game of the weekend, like to top a golden point game, it's going to be pretty tough for them. But I feel like at Sky Stadium, crowd in the stadium as well, I feel like they're going to be well and truly ramping up. Are we going to get to see the Crusaders dominate because of coming off a loss or are the Hurricanes going to be able to pull off the upset and be able to beat them. That is the exciting question. And yeah, I agree. It could be a very entertaining match between the two sides. But yeah. <laughs> I feel like I've got to that stage of when I end up looking at something, I kind of zone out. That's a great scrum there for La Rochelle, but they have still got that one. The Sale Sharks almost dropped there, and it is a penalty to them now. Can they get a try before the end of this match? That's the big question. Now, at this stage, if it stays the way it is on the scoreboard, my match that I played on Rugby Challenge 4, it was 35 to 26. So at the moment, I've got the exact same amount of points as this match that has taken place. So six minutes, we have no more tries, no more points. I guess you could say that that one was not too far off for the prediction. Although my one that I did for Exeter Chiefs versus Leinster that I haven't actually finished editing yet, has got about three red cards, so I don't think that one will be um, kind of representing what happens in the real game. Sail so Sharks, number 16, I believe he is, is not too happy. They have been closing the gap by the looks of it there, which he is not too happy about. Right, yeah, it's got the throw now. Five minutes left in this one. Can they get one try in this one? Sail Sharks to end this match. It is a short ball there to the number 20. They can throw everything at this here, Sail Sharks, because of the fact that they are going to be knocked out of this competition anyway. So you might as well go out swinging. And that is exactly what they look like they are going to be trying to do. They're at the 22 now. Now it is going to be quick, using the back line nicely. It has gone into the gap, though. And unfortunately, that means... That it has gone to ground once again for them, but they have got the advantage for the offside, so they can once again throw everything at this, but the defence of La Rochelle has been looking pretty good. That should be an advantage for the late shot from that number 23. A bit of a cheap one there, and they are going back now for the penalty. Will Skelton, they have said, was going in with the shoulder. They have taken the quick tap here. And they are trying to drive forward to Priya. Dan Priya, that is, has just had a little bit of a run there. Now it is going to be in the hands of the number 18. Goes to the number 10. McGinty goes out to the number 22, who tries to go himself. And he is doing decently. He's very close to the touchline. Gone on the inside to the number 7. They are only 10 metres out here. Now the Sale Sharks, can they get the try that they are after? The defence from La Rochelle, like I have been mentioning, has been pretty good so far. And they will be open to continue that. That was a nice ball. Offloaded once again. Has he got enough pace? It's fired out to the number 14. And that's going to be the try 
Or is it? He almost went too far there, but the number 14 does score it. And that is the try for he is going to be the name that I am looking for is going to be Byron um, McGigan has been able to score that one. But very nicely done by that man. But yeah, my voice is almost gone, unfortunately. They did just fire it wide their sales sharks. And it did lead to the try of McGigan. And it was a very nice try for them. <laughs> As my voice is almost gone. But yeah, Sal Sharks, if they were able to do that earlier on in this match, it could have been a different result because of the fact that they have just had the pressure piled onto them from La Rochelle. And that one has missed in the end. So at the moment, the score in this one is sitting 45 to the um, La Rochelle side and only the 21 to the Sale Sharks. <laughs> Anyone wondering why I am doing a lot of pausing it is because my brain is trying to keep up, but it is currently 3.45 a.m. here in New Zealand. I've already done two live streams today as well, so we have been very busy. So, um, yeah, that is why my brain just isn't quite working the way that I would like it to. But, yeah, hopefully it will last for the next match, which we are going to be doing, which is Exeter versus Leinster. Going to be a very exciting match. Uh, it was a high OS who has kicked that one off. It is going to be taken well there, but good tackle on the number 20 by La Rochelle. They are pouring on the pressure once again. Their defence, like I have said, has been pretty strong throughout this match so far. And it has been helping them get into good opportunities. Sail Sharks, the discipline has been letting them down a little bit here throughout this one. Now they are using the back line once again. It is fired wide to Tom Curry. No, it's not. It is that number 22. Now it's in the hands of the number 15 who has run hard at Doolin there. That one has been a short ball. Are they going to be able to score once more here, Sail Sharks? They aren't going down without a fight, which is good to see. You want to see them get maybe one more. And it will be a very high scoring one. Already 66 points scored throughout this match. That's a little chip in behind there, but it has been taken well by, I believe it was the replacement number nine. Another yawn has kicked in. That is, got, that is not good news for me because once the yawns do kick in, that was Danny Prizzo who did just have his first run of the match. And we have also got uh, what to do when you're tired. Step one, don't rest your eyes. Step two, um, for two seconds. Step two, drink Red Bull. Step three, have a hot or a cold bath, says um, James Gordon. You might have to be on the card soon, that is for sure. I was thinking about having some food purely because of the fact that I am getting a bit peckish with it being so early. Tell you what, McGinty now has got the ball. Or McGinty, sorry, has got the ball in the number 20. He's been busy since coming on the field. Now it's in the hands of Tom Curry, who has offloaded it back to the replacement number no, and now it is going to be Quirk who goes to the number 20. No, it's the number 10. McGinty goes to... Oh, he's offloaded it straight into the hands, though, of rule. And we have got a minute left. Victor Vito dragged down there in the tackle. And tell you what, it was almost a chance for them there. They were almost able to get the final say in this match. Now it is going to be Dulin. And they are saying it's the first European Cup semi-final for the La Rochelle side. So that is pretty awesome for them. And it will be very exciting to see how this one will go in that semi-final. Hopefully, it is going to be on at a decent hour, but I don't think it will be. Oh, it was almost taken by the number 15 there, which is Simon Hammersley, but just not quite able to take it. And now we have got one final scrum before the end of this match. I'm excited. Are they going to be able to do anything from here? I feel like La Roche, if they do get that, or La Rochelle, sorry, they do get the chance. I think they will be kicking this ball out. They don't want to risk any injuries. Yes, they would love another try, but it's not really worth risking because of the fact that they have got an important game ahead. That is going to be the semi-final that they will be moving on to. The question is, who are they going to be playing in that semi-final? I haven't actually looked up to see who is on which side of the draw, but yeah, it's going to be exciting to see who is going to be their next opponent and how they are going to be able to go in that match. But overall, we've had a lot of tries. We've had a lot of points compared with the fact that we didn't have a try for the first 28 minutes of this match. And now we have already had about... No, we've had eight tries in this one. Now it is going to be the final play of the match. It is going to be fired back by the number 21. Yes, it is. And Doolin is going to kick it into touch. And that is the end of the game. La Rochelle, sorry, 
winning this one 20 sorry that's not the score <laughs> they have won 45 points to 21 and sell sharks unfortunately they are going to be knocked out of this competition but i wonder what time is it actually in um england i think it's about maybe 5 p.m now so this nighttime game maybe um we'll have a few more eyes on it as well because of the fact that it is two big sides pretty much the final i would call it in a way because it is two very strong teams that's the thing leinster they haven't had an easy draw they had toulon or too long then they had um now it is going to be the um exeter chiefs and they are a strong side as well but yeah exciting match up to watch and i did actually enjoy that quite a bit compared with how it started with no tries for the first 28 minutes then we had eight tries in the end and two of them went to rule. Two of them went to the man in the number 13 jersey, Jeffrey um, Duma, Dumaru, I think, if I'm not wrong. Maybe I'm wrong, though. And then it was also Lades and also Aldrich who were able to score the tries at the end. For the side of um, the Sale Sharks, they were able to get the try with McGinnon. And also James was able to score the other. 30 minutes to edit, says James Gordon. It is indeed. Hopefully, I will be able to get it all done. Maybe have a snack as well. See how we go. But yeah, nonetheless, I think that is almost going to be the end of this live stream. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and I will see you all back at 4.30 for the next game between Exeter Chiefs and the, um, the Leinster side. But yeah, see you all in the next one.